Hello guys, today I will show you how to make this dress. This time I use pattern from new look number 6341. I've seen someone made this dress on one of the sewing groups on Facebook and I was like, yeah, me like it. I'm going on a cruise in a couple of months so starting to work on my summer wardrobe now. First thing first, a little bit of pattern manipulation. In front of you, you see center front bodice of the dress. You will have to cut it on the fold, so it will come as one piece. Then you will cut out sides front of the bodice, two parts. And then you see this red zigzag, this is where you're going to join parts together. And these are back center and side bodies of the dress which are also going to be joined like so. This is the back panel of the skirt. You see those arrows? It shows you which way pleats are going to be facing outwards. You will cut out two parts of it. And after this you will gather the pleats and it's going to look like this. Front panel of the skirt is almost the same, except it comes in one piece, but pleats are still facing outwards, away from each other. Ok, let's start. The fabric I chose for this project, I don't really know the name of it, I had it for ages, but it is some kind of jacquard style, floral print, medium weight fabric. I love that it doesn't crease at all. It feels like two ways stretched a little bit. Sorry if I'm wrong, I promise next time I will remember names of the fabrics that I purchased. First, of course, I need to trace the pattern on the paper. You can see the arrows I mentioned earlier. Here they are graded to different sizes. Don't let it to mislead you. For pattern tracing I use crossed paper, it's super comfortable when I need to measure straight line. I also use glass weights that I bought at Tiger and black marker for you to see guys. For you on another hand it's better to draw with pencil for more precision. These are the front and side panels of the bodies, ready to be sewn on the sewing machine. I even included a picture for you guys to understand better. I use top stitch on my industrial sewing machine with seam allowance of 1 cm from the edge. These are back center and side panels. You see that center back comes in two pieces. This is because the zip going to be inserted there later. After front and back seams attached, I'm going to attach side seams. As I already mentioned, I use industrial jerky sewing machine and I love that it has metal panel with lines that allows me to measure my seam allowance, plus it helps to make me straight lines. As long as I level it up with vertical line number 1 at the moment, I'm good to go. And this is how top looks like from the inside. I also joined shoulder lines and overlocked everything. However, just a little tip, you don't have to overlock this fabric, it doesn't shred. Too bad I don't know the name of it, ironically. Moving to the skirts. I already lined out the pleats, so my next step is to join sides of the skirt. I figured that you don't need digital picture of this process guys, it's very simple. Just join the sides and overlock it. Ta-da! The top and skirts are almost ready. I can see the dress shaping out. 
Now I need to join skirt and top together at the waistline. A little close up of the pins. I give special attention to side seams when I pin them together. It has to be precise so the lines look like continuous one line on the outside. Then sew it and overlock it. My next step is creating interfacing for the neckline. To be honest, these parts are already available in original pattern, but I wanted to make my own just to make sure everything is right. I measured them 5 cm width, draw around back and front neckline, trace it on a new paper, then cut out on the fabric. Neckline is the second difficult part on this dress after zip, but this dress needs interfacing so the neckline looks more steady. I pin interfacing part as you can see on the video, then sew it together with 0.75 mm seam allowance. Ironing is another important thing I never avoid, especially when working with round and oval shapes. I recommend to iron everything after each step so it's easier at the end. Next step is to overlock the neck interfacing for quality appearance. Then top stitch it again so it sticks to the dress bodies properly. Unfortunately, I did not film the process, but here you can see the final outcome. Armholes are another round shape. That's why I first sewed by hand with edge finishing stitching. If your fabric shreds a lot, then I would recommend to use binding or create interfacing for armholes. The same way that we've done for neckline. In my case, simple finishing stitch is just fine. Before I get on the sewing machine with this armhole, I iron it first. Do not stretch the fabric when iron it. Just press it, this way seams will look better on the round shape. Only then you can run it on the machine with stop stitch. I make a seam first, then remove the hand stitch thread. The most difficult part. For this one you will need a zip foot, not one but two, for left and right sides. Take your time, do not pull or stretch too hard, we want this zip to look perfect. I'm doing the same with another side. Next, I'm going to work on corners of the back neck central line where the zip is fastened. I sew the corner, then take it out and voila, look at this perfect zip fastener. Even the waistline almost precise. I also make continuous seam where a zip is finishing at the back center skirt line to close it up. And this is what I ended up with. Not going to lie, I don't like this part of sewing and never end up with perfectly finished zip. But here it's okay. Overlocking the inside zip lines for quality finishing. I always prefer to use overlocker, it looks professional this way. This is how the dress looks like on the inside with finished overlocked zip. Apparently, I overlocked it before I sewn the armholes. Oops, editing loops, whatever. To be honest, I lost counts in steps. 
The good thing that it's almost done. I only got H stitch left to do and then I'm free. I sew the edge of the dress with edge finishing stitch of about one and a half centimeters seam allowance. You can stitch it by hands first so it looks more accurate. For me it works as it is. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my channel, comment below what kind of videos you'd like to see on my channel. Love Asana DIY.